Hi, and welcome back to this last segment of the first hour of this Tuesday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. I'd like to open up the phone lines, 888-589-8840. 888 is the number to call. And we'd like to take uh, calls on one of two topics, either the Civil War for Values in the Republican Party, what you think about that. I'm particularly interested in how important is it to you. Now, you may not be a registered Republican, so you're looking at this as an outsider. You may be an independent. You may be a Democrat. You might be a member of the Constitution Party, whatever. But I'm just kind of curious what you think's at stake with the Civil War for control of the Republican Party. And if you, you, you do happen to want the Republican Party to succeed, how important is it, do you think, that conservatives win that battle? In other words, what would you be inclined to do if, if the Republican Party winds up again in the hands of ruling class Republicans, party elites, and the citizen class is squeezed out like they have been up to this point? What's that going to mean to you? I mean, are you thinking about, are you thinking about checking it in? Are you thinking about checking out? I mean, I kind of want to know from your vantage point, what is at stake in terms of how this issue is resolved? 888-589-8840. And then I'd also like to have you call in. Those of you who may have been involved in Operation Christmas Child, if you've done this project in the past, you've had a little bit of experience with it, if your church has done it, if your family's done it, I'd love to hear from you about what that project was like, what your kids thought of it, uh, what your experience was, what kind of satisfaction you received from participating in Operation Christmas Child. So once again, a call on either one of those two issues, the Civil War and the Republican Party, or Operation Christmas Child, and we will bring you on the air, and we will talk about it. Now, let me see if I can grab a clip or two while you're calling in. Um, let see, where do we want to go? Let's go to clip 10, Rob, while we're talking about it, the Mark Levin clip. Why don't we grab that one? Here's Mark Levin, radio host, and he was a guest on... Uh, Fox News, and he was talking about uh, this issue of w- the ruling class Republicans and how they, the Karl Rove types in particular, have been in charge of the Republican Party for years and what we have uh, to show for it. So here is, uh, here's Mark Levin, and he does not spare the horses in this soundbite. And I hear Rove today going on, we got to do this better, I got to do this, got to do this, got to get the- off the stage already, will you, pal? You're a hanger-on. I don't say this with any personal contempt. It's just enough is enough. We need fresh faces and politicians. We talk about them all the time. Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and Mike Lee and, and Marco Rubio and so forth. Well, we need fresh faces who are advising these people, too. And I'll be honest, some fresh faces on Fox wouldn't hurt. It's time for Rove to go. I can't take it anymore. I, I can't take it anymore. says, if I have to listen to Carl Rove and look at that little white chalkboard one more time, I'm going to go completely uh, out of my mind. So that's Mark Levin. He's pushing for conservatives to take control of the Republican Party. 888-589-8840, number to call. Let's start by going to Richard in Decatur, Mississippi. Uh, Richard, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Well, Brian, I'm interested in, in sort of history. I know that the Republican Party came out of the Whig Party uh, back before the, the Civil War over slavery. I'm just wondering, you know, if, if you know, you're talking about that kind of a civil war uh, where, you know, a new party will come out of this this, Repo- this Whig type Republican Party. Well, well, let me ask, let me ask you this, uh, Richard. And again, I, I'm not asking you to, to declare your party affiliation, but just looking at this thing as an observer. It, 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 you know, what do you think will happen to the Republican Party if conservatives do not get control of this thing, if this thing continues to be in the hands of ruling class Republicans like the Karl Roves? What do you think is going to happen to this political party? Oh, I think they're going to end up in the wastebasket of history. I mean, there's, you know, they're just basically Democrat lights is the way I see the Republican Party now. All right, Richard, listen, I appreciate that, and thank you for your observations. And, you know, by Civil War, I'm, I'm talking about the – I'm not talking about bullets. I'm talking about ballots here. I'm talking about decisions that are made to choose leadership. But it's a war because it's very, very intense. You've got some people with very strong feelings, think that the Republicans have got to cave on immigration – you got John Boehner out there talking about caving on immigration, Sean Hannity, Charles Krauthammer. You've got a lot of very influential 
Republicans saying we've got to cave on immigration. We've got to embrace uh, amnesty. And others who believe in the rule of law and, and know that we have the most generous immigration policy in the world believe it's working just fine. We just need to enforce the laws that we already have. Uh, so that's pretty. That's a pretty intense struggle. And you have uh, the issue with the debt ceiling. You got Jason Chaffetz. We've got a soundbite from Jason Chaffetz here that that I want to play, where he's saying, "Look, we got to hold the line. We got to hold the line on spending. The problem here is not revenue. We don't need to raise taxes. Our problem is we've got a spending problem." And so you got other other Republicans saying, "No, we got to cave on the debt ceiling. We got to increase the debt ceiling. We can't afford to hold the line on spending." So that's pretty intense, and you got the social values battle again, where people are very on, on very strongly held feelings on both sides. Some people, Republican Party, saying these social values are killing us. We got to jettison this. We got to get rid of all these social issues. They're too messy. We have people keep making statements where they get beat up by the media and all that kind of thing. We just got to stay away from that. So that's why I talk about it being a civil war because of the intensity of the convictions and emotions on both sides. And the Republicans did come out of what was called the Whig Party. And it's interesting that the Republican Party was founded to press two moral causes. Its foundation was not economic. It was moral to stop the spread of slavery and to stop the spread of bigamy. In other words, it was to stop the spread of slavery and it was to defend natural marriage. The Republican Party came into being in 1854 to defend natural marriage. Well, let's go to Kelly in Houston, Texas. Kelly, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. Well, uh, we have a group at our church called the Christian Sisters, and we've been sending out boxes for the Operation Christmas Child for as long as I've been going to the church. And I never really thought much about it, you know, because we just put little items in there, little gifts, breads, whatever. Um, But here a while back, on one of the shows here on AFR, they had a girl that had been the recipient of an Operation Christmas Child gift box, and she just was, uh, until I heard her story, Mm. you know, I didn't really think much about it, but it really just means the world to these children that receive these small tokens, you know, and... uh, know that somebody out there loves them and is thinking about them and you know i just want everybody to to know that just the smallest gift that we think is you know just insignificant actually just means the world to these children and i uh, just want everybody to try and contribute Mm. something that's a great word kelly well listen thank you very much for that and i remember that we had that girl on this program on focal point a very touching story a um, very moving story about the first gift she'd ever received. She grew up in an orphanage. She had no affection. She had no one to love her, no one to hug her, no one to care for her. A very, a very lonely, desolate existence. And this shoebox introduced her to the love of Christ. It introduced her to the love of the individual that gave her the box, who cared for her, wound up adopting her, if I remember correctly. And it's a very, very touching story. It just shows the, the way that these, these shoeboxes as simple as they are, can actually change a life. We just heard from Renan uh, Perdomo how that gift changed his life. It opened up the possibility of an education for him. All he wanted was a pencil and a, a notebook. That's all he needed to go to school. His family couldn't even afford that. God saw to it that, that what was in his, that's what was in his shoebox, and it changed uh, the course of his life. So thank you, Kelly, for that word. I appreciate that. Let's go to Kim in Virginia. Kim, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Thanks, Brian. I appreciate you, and I appreciate your program. Thank you. Just to kind of interject something, obviously, you know, I, you know, I am a Christian, and, and my vote is totally uh, based, and my party affiliation is part of, you know, totally based on my faith. And I think that the way this this election came out um, was totally, a, it was a, it was a, the spiritual temperature of our nation. Um, I mean, I know we had a lot of people jump on board that you know, we're not necessarily value voters like we are, but I think it got watered down within, you know, and, and the result is definitely the spiritual temperature of our nation. I think that's where we're lacking right now. We need a real revival in our nation. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and I agree with you, and I think your observation, Cam, about, you know, maybe this is more revealing about where the American people are at than anything else. That was probably the most 
you know, sort of disconcerting thing to me is here we've seen four years of this kind of leadership. We've seen four years of the results of this kind of leadership. And yet the American people chose to renew uh, that that politician's contract. And that's that's the, probably the most disturbing thing to me about this whole thing. And it is a reminder, you know, that we really short of a spiritual awakening, short, short of a massive spiritual awakening, I'm not sure that America realistically has any hope. If we don't get a massive turning of heart of this nation back to God, I do not see where our political leaders are going to find the courage and the spine to do what's necessary. Well, thanks, Kim. I appreciate that. Thank you for the call. Last call of the hour. Let's go to Kenneth. Kenneth, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Got about 30 seconds, my friend. What's on your mind? Uh, yes. Uh, I was just wondering why in the election that uh, the New York people, when the storm hit New York, you know, they wasn't allowed a right to go vote, you know, because that would have dramatically changed the election, you know, and what went on. But if it would have been on the other side where Obama would have needed the votes and he knew that that was an electoral state, that he would have, uh, he would have made it happen for them to be able to vote, you know. Well, you know, and I'm guessing, you know, I'm guessing you're probably right, Kenneth, and thank you for the call. You know, and the reality is there were people that were not able to get to the polls to vote because of Hurricane Sandy, because of the storm. Now, New York is a safe state for President Obama, safe state for New Jersey, safe state for President Obama. They never had to worry about which way that election was going to go. I will guarantee if that had been a little bit closer, they would have made sure that those people had a way to get to the, the ballot box. You're listening to Focal Point on AFR Talk. I am Brian Fisher. Great to have you with us. We got, we're got we loaded up for the second hour, so don't go anywhere. We will get into this latest updates on the General Patea situation or General Patreya situation. We had another four-star general now that's been dragged into this deal for exchanging inappropriate emails with the third woman involved in this deal, this uh, Kelly from Tampa, back in five. American Family Radio, AFR Talk. I'm Buddy Smith, Executive Vice President of American Family Association, American Family.